Hello friends out there in YouTube land, Robert Ham here with Robert Ham Photography. This is the Roll 9 with the amazing TL70. And I got a couple of things I want to share with you before we go on. But uh, yeah, I'm getting really fun. We're going to have a lot of fun looking at this particular roll and share with you some inside photography settings. How cool is that? But before we go any further, remember, if you're out there trying to meet and greet new people, handing them your business card just because you say hi doesn't necessarily guarantee they're even going to remember you the next day. But if you take a picture with them, right, and then hand them a photo, and you've got this beautiful wrap going on here like I do, like an Instax photo by Robert Hamm with the phone number and contact information, they're not going to throw this away. They're, or at least they're far less likely to throw this away than they would throw away your business card, which means you're more likely to create a communication with a memory. How cool is that? Think about putting an Instax wrap. If you guys like one of these, my graphics design team has them put together. We can customize one for you. They're $25 for the template, and you can use them all you would like, especially formatted for Instax film. Let's go ahead with this real quick. Um, Really cool here. This roll was actually one of the rolls that Fuji that um, I got sent of the Fujifilm Instax because of the free films for life by Mint Camera. How cool is that? Uh, if you don't know about that campaign, we'll be talking about it a little bit more soon. But actually, let's look at this. Okay, so I actually finished up mid-roll with some images of um, this lady right here and her kiddos out by a tree. Took, look, look at the white balance in here. Very nice, beautiful, nice subject separation. Good composition. I kept this one for the fun of it. I gave her a couple of the other ones. This was one that I gave her. I gave her um, the other one was eighty. I didn't give her this one. Obviously, I have it, but I gave her number eighty-two. And uh, if you don't know, if you're just tuning in, up here is my EXIF information: the date, the aperture, what kind of exposure compensation I used, and if there was a flash or anything, and then the number, and of course, what camera I used to take it with. Really cool image. I want to show you right here too, uh, by turning the TL70 to the side, I was able to get this really cool image, but the problem was I was at negative exposure compensation. And by now, this is uh, something that I should have known. There was no reason to use negative exposure compensation. I was at F8. This is taken in the same area. I was at F8 with negative exposure compensation. Looking down towards the ground, which has less sky in it than, of course, this portrait, means we're going to be taking an image that is a darker value, has a lower exposure value than the other one. So by using 5.6 and opening it up, that was a good choice. But by turning on the exposure compensation to the negative, that was a bad choice. Uh, anytime you're photographing something that's darker than your previous, if you're getting a good shot here, don't muck it up like I did here. Okay, pro tip, use it wisely. However, what a cute pic of Rob and Sophie, you know, a little puppy dog. Now, i got three images to show you here, okay? And this is important because I want to show you number 84, 85, and 86, okay? And these are going from right to left. I guess we'll go from left to right for you. Um, the reason that these are important is because I want to share with you the one that is correctly exposed for indoor lighting. Now, you might look at this and say, my goodness, Rob, Rob, these things look crazy with the color. Why is the color wrong? Well, the color is not wrong, my friends. I'm here to share with you. Instax film is a daylight balanced film. These images were taken inside under halogen lamps, actually fluorescent lighting. You can see one fluorescent bulb right there and you can see a little bit of another one right there. So uh, they're very much, much more orange than outdoor light, which gives us, actually they're kind of green, and that's what gives us this orange coloring. Okay, they're not 5600 Kelvin, they're more like, you know, 35 or 3800, and we get this color cast. But I wanted to give you a series of images that were at the same aperture in the exact same lighting environment and share with you the differences. This is, they're all at f5.6. This is negative exposure compensation, and from my ear, it was about a quarter of a second. Now, why, how could I even know what a quarter of a second was? Well, I'm used to shooting with manual cameras that have a click, and I'm used to shooting. I know what that shutter sounds like, so for me it felt like it chose a, a setting of about one quarter of one second. Remember, it's a matrix meter, so what did it try to do? It tried to bring in all the highlights and then average everything out to about 18% gray. Remember, the meter sees a much larger scene than the actual lens does, and this is the shot that it returned. At 5.6, we have correct exposure here, no exposure compensation necessary on number 85. Look at that. Forgetting the color, recognize that my grandmother is beautifully exposed. The camera did a wonderful job at 5.6. And if we look in the background, we actually see at 5.6, we've got quite a bit of background blur and bokeh. We even see these front little flowers out of focus, but these focus, these flowers are in focus with grandmother. And then, of course, she's now fed up with all of this in uh, number 86. She wants to hit me with that stick, that stirring stick, which is a normal occurrence at my grandmother's house. But once again, at positive exposure compensation that we see right here, uh, we have a completely blown out image. So what do you learn? Well, I hope you learned that the way to affect your exposure 
is not with the aperture. Aperture on this camera is going to give you depth of field. I hope that you recognize the way to affect expo exposure is through your exposure compensation. And how cool is that? And if you see something that's a little crazy, don't worry your face. Um, it's not the, the, the camera doing anything crazy. It's the fact that the film is daylight balanced. Okay, moving on along the very next day, we decide, or I think it's the next day, 21. I guess it's later on the same day. Decide to go and take some pictures of the train. And here's where I could have really benefited from um, an ND filter set right here. I'm just going to show you 87, 88, and 89. I guess we can put them in a better order for you. Um, and what we're seeing is that there are many different lighting conditions. And you might say, Rob, you used F22 with negative exposure compensation. How come your pictures aren't properly exposed? Well, let's look at this one real quick. Remember that the matrix meter needs to be in the same lighting environment as the subject. Notice I'm taking a landscape shot. This is very far away. So if you don't recognize, it's very bright out here today, but I'm standing underneath the shade of the train station waiting facility right here, right by the tracks. So this is really bright and my meter is in real dark shade. So I can't choose anything other than negative on my exposure compensation and my uh, fastest or smallest shutter or my smallest aperture in order to affect whatever exposure change will happen. Um, and the meter is not going to choose an exposure based on here. It's actually going to choose an exposure based on where the meter is. And the meter's on the camera with me. See, the meter's on the camera under shade. And even though I'm photographing a scene that's in the light, because I'm not in the same kind of lighting environment, my exposure for my subject here is all out of whack. If we would like proof, let's turn and look and see the thing that's in the same kind of shade that I'm in. Look, the tracks are properly exposed. That's because, once again, the matrix meter is metering for the shadows, which means that the highlights are going to blow out. Uh, had it not blown out, the sky was almost azure blue. This is a red brick building, and this is a green field right there, and these are just rocks. How crazy is that? Continuing on that same conversation, when we turn, we have some more proof. Before we go, I guess we'll talk about, no, let's talk about the more proof. As we turn the other way, notice I'm underneath here, and we can see the shaded areas, okay? are in much better uh, exposure than the other one, and we can see other dark areas are properly exposed. Now, why would these be exposed better than this sky area? Well, quite frankly, trees, remember, are a very dark area, especially at a distance, and so these trees are much more closer to the same exposure value of set, standing underneath this um, little overhang in the waiting area than is the sky and everything else. Remember, a matrix meter meters for the shadows which will overexpose the highlights. Now, why do I say that so often? It's because I want you to remember it. Now, if we look right here at this one, we can see, once again, quite a bit more. Now, why do we have better metering here? Well, if we look at this picture of the train as it's coming in, we'll recognize, even though we're at 22 with negative exposure compensation, the train has come in and is actually blocking quite a bit of the background. Look at that. We're in the same spot, you see. But because the train is blocking all of this, it's changing how the camera is choosing to meter. It's changing it quite a bit. In order for this to come out more exposed here, it's changing the meter to a faster shutter speed. Obviously, this was a slower shutter speed because this is all blown out. Obviously, this is a faster shutter speed because it's not. The only thing that has changed is that the train is coming in, and the train is very long, and it's taking up a big chunk of what the camera's metering right now. Remember, the TL70 uses a matrix meter, and it meters for the shadows, and the train in the full scene, even more of the scene that we can't see here, is taking up a bigger chunk. But let's just think about it. Right now, the train is taking up at least 30% of this frame, whereas 30% is not filled here. So that would most definitely affect the way the camera would meter, even if the meter wasn't seeing the bigger picture. I hope that's helpful for you. And let's put it back into perspective. Remember, guys, I'm a portrait guy, so let's turn the family into the light, and then let's go ahead and take a picture of them. I used no flash here, just the ambient light, F22 negative exposure compensation, and we're back into the happy world. Notice I have just very slight vignetting on these images, and that's because I have adjusted my aperture very, very nicely, very, very softly, and you could actually have even had a better um, luck with no vignetting had I adjusted it a little bit more. 
gingerly. Uh, that's the way you get rid of vignetting. Guys, this has been roll number nine. I hope that you have enjoyed. I'm Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography. Don't forget to catch me on the flip side at Rob Ham Photo. You can find me over at Rob Ham Photo on Instagram where you will see the rest of the story because if you're only watching here, you're missing half of it. I want to thank you for watching and remind you that I will catch you on the flip side.